Always looking forward to spending a little time with our friend Dennis Horton. He's the director of the Rockford, uh, let's see, what is it? It's the Rockford Regional Office. I think I can get this right. Rockford Regional Office of the Better Business Bureau. Long title. He handles the Better Business Bureau here in Rockford. Dennis, good morning. Good morning, Riley. How are you? I'm doing really well. I got a little hung up on the title, but other than that, we're good. We're good. I don't good. mean nothing. And uh, this segment I always look forward to because I always hear from people who send me a quick note. Hey, thanks. I wasn't aware of that. Dennis uh, saved me some money this morning by telling me about this, that, or something else. Today, whaling cyber criminals going after the big fish. It is the same. It's a, a bigger um, crime than uh, just fishing and spear fishing, where the cyber criminals would just uh, send out robo uh, attacks. Um, but now they're targeting the, the top of the chain, the CEOs, the CFOs, uh, the decision makers in, in companies to get them to, well, send money uh, for, for any number of reasons. The, the issue here is that uh, the CEO uh, will receive an email from uh, 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 someone saying that they either owe money or that they you need to send money to them for a myriad of reasons, Riley. But the thing is, you know how busy CEOs and CFOs and, and the people who are running the corporations and the businesses and the owners are, very often they just take a look at the email, send it off to accounting, and uh, a check is cut or the money is wired, and they lose, uh, in many cases, thousands of dollars. Wow. Or, or they will provide information on employees in one cyber attack. Uh, they ask for the uh, Social Security numbers and uh, IRS information on employees, and it was turned over, and that was at Seagate in, in California. What uh, is interesting about this is that we found out about this from our uh, Steve Baker, who is the BBB's international investigator. He, he notified us about this a couple weeks ago, and I did a report on this. But two weeks ago, there were, there were no attacks here locally. And inside of less than uh, uh, two weeks, uh, we have two. Uh, uh, the Reverend Andrea Skornick at Emmanuel uh, Episcopal Church uh, received an email uh, saying uh, uh, that, pardon me, she sent, uh, an email was sent out under her name to parishioners and other people in her contact list uh, saying that uh, she needed help. It uh, didn't define what that help would be, but that when uh, parishioners uh, receive uh, an urgent email from clergy, they are quick to respond. Uh, fortunately, they caught this very quickly, and no one was duped. And then in our own company here at the BBB, our CEO, uh, there was an email sent to the New York BBB office supposedly from our CEO, Steve Burness in Chicago, that uh, we needed to have $5,000 urgently wired to us. Um, <laughs> the tip, as Steve is fond of saying, the tip-off or the rip-off is that uh, the, the method by which we were to receive the money was through iTunes uh, gift cards. Oh, sure, yeah, the standard operating procedure for businesses, right. Exactly. You know, so when New York received that request, that you know, they did see it, they did look at it, and they immediately called and said, did you know these things are going out? Uh, the problem, again, is that uh, it didn't take very long for this to, to become a local issue. And it, it, it warrants um, repeating and, and warning people to be on the lookout for, check your email, uh, make sure that your, especially your accounting staff and, and the people in your uh, leadership positions uh, who would be targeted on this are aware of uh, this issue. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I, you, you make a great point. They went after, okay, this person's really busy. They'll get this. They'll see this. They'll forward it along. Next thing you know, maybe somebody will cut us a check. And that's exactly what happened. Exactly. Okay. So once again, it pays to read everything over very carefully before forwarding that along, especially to someone who uh, has the purse strings. Yeah, it, it, you know, and, and it's it's an easy uh, scam to to know. Um, the the red flag is pretty big. Uh, they're asking you to send money 
through some unusual method. And the urgency. There is always an urgency uh, attached to any of these online scams or, or most scams in, in, in general, whether the person is knocking on your door or, or calling you on the phone or sending you an email. Uh, they push the urgency and the need to get this done right away. Yeah, so we don't want you to think about this too much. Just get that check cut and get it sent off and avoid something bad happening. Exactly. Uh, until it turns out that was the bad thing that happened. All right, so that's called whaling. Whaling. The wow. big fish. Yeah, the whaling for the big fish. I, I love the, the fact that creative names are given to each one of these scams, too. <laughs> it seems to work every single time. What about the uh, check fraud scams? They have been, uh, since, you know, I, I've been around here uh, for... Uh, a decade and a half, and there have always been uh, check scams, lottery checks that people get in the mail, uh, a check for a grant that you're getting from the uh, from the federal government. Uh, all kinds of fake checks uh, have been arriving in people's mail boxes for 15, 20 years that sure. I've been involved with the BBB. Problem is that this, even though with technology, a lot of our financial transactions are done electronically. However, the check scam fraud. Is on the rise. People are falling for it more often. Um, I mentioned Dwayne often uh, walked in the other day and handed me a check and said, uh, here they are. Um, so what we have done at the BBB, along, I mentioned his name earlier, Steve Baker, who is our international uh, investigator, did a four-month study on, on the check fraud and found that uh, 500,000 people a year fall for this, and uh, we think that number is really low, given that many people don't uh, inform us or inform anybody uh, about the fact that they were duped uh, with this check fraud. I and won't... What, Go ahead. The, and the other uh, important uh, note is that uh, we always point to uh, senior citizens as those who are the victims. Well, in this case, it is people who are 21 to 39 uh, who fall more frequently for these uh, fake checks. And the important thing to remember is that anything that you deposit in your account, you are responsible for. So when the, the uh, scammer asks you to forward uh, a portion of, of the money that uh, you have deposited uh, to them, usually around $2,500 or so, to them, you are now responsible for that $2,500. Uh, just because a check uh, uh, is deposited into your account doesn't mean that it's good or that it's cleared. It could take uh, two days to two weeks before your bank notifies you that you have deposited a counterfeit check, and if you've spent any of that money, they expect you to pay it back. Ooh, therein lies the rub. That's where the big problem comes into play. Exactly. And the most people think that, uh, well, I am the victim of a crime. Well, that is true. You are the victim. However, you are still responsible for it. The bank is not going to eat that loss. Uh, you will. So it's important that uh, people really understand that, one, uh, just because a check is, is uh, deposited uh, and appears to have cleared, it may take two up to two weeks, and that you are responsible for any check you deposit in any financial institution, you're on the hook for it. And again, the, the key that uh, should always tell people that this is a fraud is if you receive one of those checks, be it a lottery check or a grant check or, or something like that, that when they ask you to send them a portion of that money, an overpayment for whatever reason to them, you know immediately that this is a scam. Yep, because they're now they're rooting out some of the dough that was sent to you to begin with, and that's how you get yourself snared in this whole trap. And that's how they make their money. <sighs> wow. You know, well, like my grandmother used to say, if you would have devoted that much thought to doing something legitimately, you'd be a millionaire. <laughs> yes, and, and not in trouble. Yeah, not in trouble. Exactly. <laughs> not have millions in fines, but actually, you know, have millions to, to your credit. Now, speaking of credit, enhanced credit report safeguards. This is a good thing, right? This is a very good thing. Uh, identity theft remains at the top of the of the the, the scammers' uh, crimes, and uh, 
a new law that goes into effect a week from this Friday on September 21st is designed to protect us so that we are able to more readily track um, our credit reports and make sure that uh, we can prevent uh, people from accessing our credit report or opening accounts in our names. This new law allows us to freeze our credit reports or apply a fraud alert. The difference is now that it won't cost us any money to do so. It's free. Previously, it could cost you, uh, because you do have to contact each credit reporting agency, uh, Equifax or uh, Experian or TransUnion, you would have to pay 10 bucks uh, a pop for one of those and then for each one of those and then if you wanted to unfreeze that report another 10 bucks so you could be on the hook for $60 and while it's important now however you can apply those protections for free outstanding yeah so it doesn't cost you to protect yourself it, exactly and that's it's an important thing because uh, again identity theft it is an ongoing concern, and it needs to remain top of mind for for all of us because it can it can be happening without your knowing. And this way, if you are doing the right things by checking your credit report at least uh, uh, once a, once a year, or as we uh, recommend you do, spread it out throughout the year. If you find that there is a problem, you can now immediately act on it by freezing your your credit report or applying a fraud alert. Outstanding, without anything having to come out of your pocket. And that's a good thing. That is a very good thing. <laughs> See, that's why these segments are so darn valuable. You learn so many different things. It can save you uh, so much money, so much time, so much headache and stress. And uh, are you still doing uh, nominations for the BBB Torch Awards? <laughs> Yes, we are, uh, and uh, there's still plenty of time, but we would like to get them in so that we can. Uh, one of the things about the Torch Awards is that all of the nominations, unless you are already BBB accredited, uh, have to be vetted. So we have to go through uh, the, the nomination process, look at the, uh, the, the paperwork and all those things that are presented to us for the people who are, are truly worthy of uh, receiving the Torch Awards, and you have until October 8th to uh, get a nomination in. Uh, we're looking forward to uh, finding and, and uh, applauding and uh, the businesses in this community who do things the right way. Absolutely. Yeah, and more people need to know about them, so no more people will, will cross over the threshold and do business with them. We, uh, we think people deserve a pat on the back and a reward for doing things right. Yes, and uh, if you are a customer of a business who you believe deserves recognition, by all means, you can nominate that person as an individual. It does not have to be a business uh, person uh, or a person working for their company. Uh, it can be just a customer who really appreciates the work that is being done for, on their behalf by a business. How do people uh, get somebody nominated? Uh, you can go to BBB.org, click on the, the little box that says Torch Awards, and then click on Rockford. Or you can give us a call here at the office, and we'll walk you through it if you have a problem. Just that easy. That's what the Better Business Bureau is doing for you. Uh, you know, saving you money, saving you time, saving you headaches, and shining the spotlight on people who are doing things the right way. Dennis, as always, I, I can't tell you how much we appreciate you taking time out of your day and all the valuable information you give us. And thank you for the time that you provide for, to us. Not a problem. Have a great rest of the week. You too.